welcome Natasha Warnema. So my husband Rudy and I, we've been married for 20 years. And 20 years is long enough to kind of learn the idiosyncrasies of your, your significant other. And for me, I am very organized, as Matt would say. My husband actually would call that uh, OCD. There is a, there's a little bit of truth to that. Uh, there's a saying, a uh, place for everything, everything in its place. For me, I like to have the coats hung up, I like to have the shoes put aligned, I like the beds made, I like the dishes done at the sink at night. And uh, when I was telling my husband about this opportunity to speak at Arctic Entries, he's like, oh, be sure to include that you have to be at the airport two hours early. You have to be at the movies 30 minutes before the uh, previews even start, and for you, on time is late. <laughs> okay, okay, there's a little truth to that, that's fair. Uh, when I was younger, my family actually called me the muscle. And not because of my fit physique, but because sometimes I could be a little tense and uptight. <laughs> but to my husband's credit, he actually accommodates some of my neuroses and he helps me with the dishes every night. And Rudy, honey, thank you, I appreciate that. So on with the story. So picture a beautiful sunny day in Southeast Alaska. We're about 70 miles north of Juneau. Rudy and I are on a double date with our friends John and Tessa. We're in a little 20 foot dory boat and we're king salmon fishing under the sun. So we spent all day salmon fishing, laughing, joking. It was a beautiful two day uh, weekend. We're supposed to kind of be romantic, kind of loosen up, chill out, relax, the whole thing. So after a full day fishing, we uh, find ourselves a cove, just a random cove, and anchor up the boat. And we take the little rowboat to shore, and we build a fire, and we roast hot dogs and marshmallows and drink beer. It's a great evening. And then it, it's, it's evening, so about 10, 11 o'clock at night, it's time to go to bed. It's been a really long day. So John and Tessa take the rowboat back to the dory boat. That's where they're sleeping. And Rudy and I, we're gonna sleep in the tent on the beach. So we're tidying up, and I turn to Rudy and I said, well, how do you want to put out the fire? And he's like, it's fine. I'm like, oh, oh that goes against my OCD. Uh, if it was up to me, we would take a five gallon bucket of water and completely douse that fire. It would be an, an ash slurry, an, uh, a fire soup, if you will. Uh, but no, 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 no. This weekend, I'm supposed to be relaxed, Natasha. Lay back, Natasha. Go with the flow, Natasha. So Rudy must have seen the conflict on my face because he gently lays his hand on my arm and says, Honey, I'll tell you what. How about I pee on the fire? <laughs> and I thought, really? Uh, well, how much you got? And he's like, uh, I got quite a bit. I've had a few beers tonight. And I said, okay, let's go for it. So he starts peeing on the fire, and I got a big stick, I'm stirring. And he pops over here and he pees on the fire, and I got a big stick, and I'm stirring. And it's a big smelly, you know, you know, steam bath. Oh. And he's done. And I look down, I said, there's a few embers, but okay, you know, hey, it's, it's go with it. If he's good with it, I'm good with it. So we go to bed, fall asleep. A couple hours later, I wake up, and I'm just kind of listening to the night sounds, and I'm like, oh, something sounds kind of funny. So I said, I'm kind of curious, I'll, I'll take a look. So I unzip the fly of the tent, and I look outside, and I see tiny little flames at the edge of long blades of grass, tiny little flames at the edges of pieces of driftwood. It's like a fire fairy had come with her wand and went, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> My first thought was, oh, that is so pretty. <laughs> and then I kind of looked a little harder and I, I blinked a little bit and I was like, wait a second. There's like flames about 50 feet beyond our fire pit and some of them are in large clumps. The beach is on fire. So I run back to the tent, Rudy, 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 the beach is on fire. He's like, oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. So we put on our boots and we look around, what do we have? We have two Nalgene bottles and a titanium pot. So we run down to the beach, and it is low tide, low, low tide. It's like 70 feet down this hill. And so we're running down the hill, and we're going, John, Tessa, wake up. 
because they're in the boat right there in the cove. And so we get down there, and Rudy puts the titanium pot into the water, and I take the two Nalgene bottles, and I bend down, and <laughs> Do you know how long it takes to fill up my, our Nalgene bottles when you're in a hurry? So we run back up, and we douse the water out, and we douse the flames. And we're like, one flame down, 99 more to go. And at that point, John had tested, they had joined us, and so John's got this big fire extinguisher, and he goes, shh, that works great on a five foot by five foot area. <laughs> so we're like, we gotta keep doing it. So for about 30 minutes, we're running back and forth, and we're kicking it, we're stomping it, we're dousing it. And after about 30 minutes, we take a pause, and we're making progress. It's not getting any worse. We're like, oh, phew. And then we kind of like look at each other, and we're all pretty much naked. <laughs> I'm like, please, let's not have a GoPro or an iPhone or anything. So the next 45 minutes, we keep going, we're, we're dousing and the whole thing, and we finally put it out. And we're cleaning up, ready to go to bed for the second time. And Tessa kind of turns to Rudy and I and said, uh, why didn't you put the fire out in the first place? And Rudy and I are like, he's like, I peed on it. And I, like, I stirred it. Clearly not enough. So from that night on, I was the official fire marshal for the family <laughs> until about two years later we have the fateful kitchen grease fire and uh, so what happens when we have grease fire you generally put a lid on it <laughs> oh no not me <laughs> I wanted the fire out of the kitchen so what do I do I carry, carry a flaming bowl of grease fire through the living room towards the balcony so I can throw it out of the snow and what does one do when they're faced with a big flaming ball of grease? They flinch. And that's exactly what I did. And a big ball of grease leapt over the side of the pot and completely singed the carpet. And Rudy looks at me and he's standing right beside me and he's like, huh, we're even. 